another episode of Tea Party Tuesdays, where it may be a Tuesday, but in my world, it's always a tea party. And we have a very special guest today. Please help me welcome one of the winners of the Her Universe Fashion Show 2016, Jesse Thaxton. <laughs> now, Jesse, uh, it's your own birthday. Did you know that? I did. Yeah. You did. Every day is your own birthday, except for one day a year. Exactly. And so we're here to celebrate your own birthday today. So thank you for joining oh, us. Oh, hooray. Well, happy own birthday to you as well. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I have to apologize. Kate Middleton sends her regards. She really wanted to be here today, but her hairdresser canceled on her at the last minute and had to rearrange her appointment. And it's like right now during our tea party. Of course. Well. Well, that's important. Yeah, you know how important Kate Middleton's hair is. Yeah. Next time, hopefully, Kate will join us for our party. But you are the guest of honor, and you won the Her Universe Fashion Show. Oh my gosh, it's been such a year. I know, I know. And I'm wearing your jacket that you designed. It makes me so happy to see it. It's, it's gorgeous, and it's literally been one of the favorite pieces of the collection. Everyone's going nuts over this jacket. When I told all the The Mascara girls about it, just their reactions were so beautiful. Something like, oh, I'm crying to know that like I was part of inspiring something at Her Universe. Like, well, you inspire a lot of stuff at Her Universe. Well, tell us about the, the group of girls that inspired this jacket, because it's, it's an amazing story. For the longest time, I had these friends that they would talk about this group of girls called The Mascara, and I've always loved Wonder Woman, but it, I'm not, I wasn't on Facebook all the time, so I never really jumped in. But then when you called me about Wonder Woman, I was like, well, I'm gonna have to go do some covert work. And so I went and I got to know all of these girls and I got to hear their stories and the things that they do and how Wonder Woman has inspired them to really come together as a sisterhood of a community. I just fell in love with them and just had to be, had to make things for them to wear so that all the girls, no matter their size or shape or confidence or if they want to wear dresses, they could put a little jacket with anything that they wear. It's, it's gorgeous and actually, you know, I'll show, I'll show the back, let's see. All right, um, so we did a logo just for the Daughters of the Mascara, and cool. um, it's, it's, it really is this underground society. So you have the jacket, and you also designed um, the Daughters of the Mascara tank. One of the important things for me was, and I think a lot of the girls talked about, was they really wanted some of the really cool pieces from the collections, but, you know, price points can sometimes keep people from. So uh, I wanted to make sure that we had something for those girls so that they could be part of the sisterhood as well without having to compromise their budget. And that's that's the thing especially that's important to us at Her Universe yeah. and Hot Topic is that there's something for everyone. Exactly. And I mean you have done the Daughters of the Mascara proud. I definitely feel uh, like it. Their reactions every time. Tell us about uh, what it was like competing in the fashion show because it was your second year mm -hmm. that that you won so you actually competed in it twice. And what was the what was the process like you know being a designer in the show? And, and from the time you realized, oh shoot, I need, I need to make this thing that I sketched out and drew because your designs were always like super ambitious, but that's also why you won because your designs are incredible. Part of the reason I picked Falcor is I wanted something that was light and hopeful. You know, going through inspirations and kind of talking to people about what they think that Falcor would wear. You know, the whole covert thing. I'm all about the covert because... I like how you go undercover. Uh, yeah, I'm just being like, hey, so if Falcor were a dress, like, you know, six months in advance, so they're six months later, like, that's why she asked that <laughs> question. So, you know, just, and then of course, fabric searching, because you got to know what fabric you're going to use before you make your dress. And that's part of the reason, you know, truly, I think you really blew away the fans is because every single piece of your garment you put thought into, down to every single pearl and, and All those bead pearls. and rhinestones. <laughs> so, you know, what, did, what advice do you have for designers about the details? Plan. Don't, don't just launch into making your thing, especially if you're using expensive materials because you're going to end up really frustrated and sad because you're going to have to go back and buy more things. Your planning process should take just as long as the creation process, in my opinion. So what advice do you have for cosplayers who are extremely talented, but maybe want to get into fashion? How do they look at their cosplay different? So I think it was Chanel that said, and I've always applied this to everything I do in fashion, is put on everything that you think you want to wear in the morning and then take a piece off. So I think in incorporating cosplay into fashion, you need to learn to edit, which is, that's a really big skill in fashion, which I'm sure we all know. 
Um, so learning to edit, research other couture designers and see what kind of, you know, Alexander McQueen can be very costumey, but it's still very fashion because he pulls back. Like if he has a whole bunch of detailing, he uses just one solid color. What moment do you think was a defining moment for you? Or you would say you probably didn't do the right thing or something didn't go your way. I think my biggest struggle as an independent designer trying to do geek fashion was navigating the tricky waters of what can I make and what toes the line of what's legally proper. And I think that's something that a lot of the girls struggle with when they start trying to launch a line. And I think that research uh, was a thing that I did not do at first, and I'm finally starting to do that, and I'm actually launching my line at Comic-Con on Friday. Yeah. Congratulations! <laughs> yeah, I'm going to licensing expo and everything. Jesse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that deserves cake. So I have a special cookies and cream cake I'm for us today. so excited. I love... It's beautiful. Oreo. Anything Oreo yeah. is beautiful, yeah, I think. Definitely. But tell me more about your new line. So we're starting with like a little local artist, Michelle Lopes, for the San Diego Comic Con. And uh, she's drawing us like a space Rococo girl with a robot cat that we're gonna print on things. So we can have our own little starting point to kind of bring and show. Okay, that's awesome. Who doesn't want a robot cat on something? Right? So I'm so excited about all the sequin. We're doing sequin bombers, because I love bombers. Sequins bombers are very on trend. Yeah, we got these brand new color reversing ones. It's like bright blue and bright pink. I'm what? Yeah, so excited. Jesse, I'm so happy for you. But I have a question for you. Okay. That I ask everyone. All right. That you know comes in here for a tea party. So my favorite Alice in Wonderland quote is, "Why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast." Mm -hmm. So what's one impossible thing that you're believing today? That I'm gonna sell out. Everything. You are. You're gonna sell out. Yep, everything. It, it's gonna. I guess be... that's not really impossible, right? <laughs> well, no. So that that's the thing. I show this every time, but this is why I keep this pillow on my chair. So this yeah. is my office, um, but I also have tea parties, and I see this pillow every day, and it says "Believe the impossible," and that's why I love the quote because if you believe the impossible every day, it it becomes possible. It becomes possible. Yep. Oh my goodness, does it? <laughs> so you are going to be a top selling designer. Yes. Your line's gonna sell out. Yes. And um, that's not impossible. That's not at all, yeah. I love it. Well, Jesse, thank you so much for having a tea party with me today. Thank you for having me and for bringing Oreo cake. <laughs> I think we need more cake. Yeah, we do. Okay, and for you at home, uh, sorry we don't have Oreo cake for you, um, but I hope you enjoy some sort of sweet today and have a very curious day. Goodbye. Bye.